So God has been good. He's been so good that I'm grateful to know him. He's been so good that I'm in love with him. With the things he does and the things he say to me is just amazing. Because, you know, many times we, we don't realize how blessed we are. And so many people that are not here wish they could be here. Amen. And we got a chance to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And since we got that chance, we need to be happy doing it. Amen. Amen. And what I come to see is so many people are angry or upset because they got to come to church. They angry and upset because they got to serve God. I mean, you should be grateful that he even let you call his name. Because he don't have to, you can have your, your mouth tongue shut and you can't speak his name. But he gave you the ability to say his name. You should be grateful that you are able to say his name. Amen. 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 But that's not what we're here today about. Today we got a topic which is good. It's called deliverance and devotion with power from God. Amen. Deliverance and devotion with power from God. Amen. And this coming out of something. The scriptures coming from Romans chapter 6. Let's turn to Romans chapter 6. That chair makes so much noise. Romans chapter 6. What shall we say? Then shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound, God forbid. How shall we that are dead, in, dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ has, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We also should walk in newness of life. So Jesus walked in newness of life. We as children of God must walk in newness of life. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 58. First Corinthians chapter 15. And verse 58. Deliverance has come. Seize the moment. Listen to this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. See that? Your labor is not in vain in the Lord as long as you're in the Lord. See, many people angry and sad or upset when they come to church because they're not coming for the right reason. If you're coming for the right reason, it's for the Lord. You joyful. You glad. You happy. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I came jumping. <laughs> Amen. I came praising. I came leaping. I came shouting. So if you're coming in the house of the Lord for the Lord, you should come happy. Right. There should not be a sad face in here at all. I don't care what yesterday did or what this morning did. When you come in the house of the Lord, you should be free. Yes. Free from anger, free from malice, free from, from discord, free from bondage. Let it go. Let it go. Leave it outside. And don't pick it up after you leave. Let it stay outside so long that it leaves itself. Yes. We must understand that we cannot have true deliverance without real devotion and genuine power. See, this is what the Lord is saying to us. Devotion is hard to find. The devotion, not just the word, but devotion itself is hard to find because many people have excuses for everything when it comes to the things of God. Yeah. When it comes to the work of the Lord, there's always an excuse. Jesus. And we must know that without devotion and power, your deliverance will be short-lived. Without devotion, your deliverance will be short-lived. So whatever God delivered you from, 
if you're not devoted to him after, whatever you were delivered from will be short-lived. It won't be delivered no more. Don't think just because you were delivered that you're going to always be delivered. You got to work for this stuff. That's right. That's right. You can't say God healed my body, then God healed my body. You never do nothing for God after that. Amen. That's right. You will not be healed again, and you will be sick again. It will come back because of your actions. So you got to have power to stay delivered and the only work if you get devotion. Amen. You got to be devoted to God at all costs for your deliverance to keep working. You got to be devoted to God at all costs for your power to grow. Your power grows by the devotion or the more you do for God, the more power he lets you have. That's right. That's right. But if you're not doing nothing, what's he going to give you his power for? Yeah. That's right. Why do you need great power if you're not trying to move no mountains? That's Come on, right. somebody. That's right. You're not trying to overcome no obstacles, but you want power to do what? Oh, Jesus. Huh? You want deliverance to do what? And many people are delivered but don't do nothing with their deliverance. They don't tell nobody about God. They don't tell nobody about what they've been through. They don't go outside and minister to nobody. But they got deliverance. What do you got it for? That's right. Mm. Why? When, 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 when Apostle Paul Peter was delivered, they went and told the whole world, look, I'm free from jail. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get free from jail and you just... Don't say nothing to nobody. Jeez. Nobody even know you was in there. Oh but God. God set you free and you can't testify to nobody about nothing he set you free from. That's sad. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. And that's what's going on now. Too many people got all this good stuff. I'm too good to talk about myself. I'm too good to talk about what I've been through. That's my past. I'm going to leave it there. No, you need to testify of what the goodness of Jesus that's right. and all that he done. Let me tell you something. Apostle Paul, everywhere he went, he testified. That's right. They got tired of hearing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he testified so good that he made King Agrippa want to get saved. Yeah. He said, your words make me want to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's what your testimony could do. That's what your deliverance could do. You got to work the work of God. Yes. If you want him to work for you. Or else it's going to be short-lived, like we said. So here we go again. This, you need power and devotion to keep your deliverance. You need power and devotion to keep your deliverance. Not devotion to man, but devotion to God. See, you can be devoted to me all you want. That doesn't mean you're going to get much. It's good. You might get something. But the more you're devoted to God, the better it is. Don't come pleasing me. That's right. Don't come pleasing your pastor, your bishop, That's your right. apostle, or whoever they are. That's right. Because they can't pay you for your services. Come on, yeah. somebody. No, they can't. <laughs> if you want to please someone, please God. Now, yeah. this, now, being obedient is pleasing God when you're obedient to them. But don't think you come in here for me. That's right. Don't say, I'm going to do this for me. Because I don't want God's glory. Say you're going to do it because God set you free. You're going to come because God gave you a word. You want to preach because God did something. Don't say you want to do it for me. That's right. Do it for God that's and yourself. Right. And that's what they've been trying to teach people. Amen. Many people put their eye on man and not God. No, don't try to be a people pleaser. Be a God pleaser. That's right. Be a God pleaser. That's right. It's God that gives you the power and deliverance yes. to all. This is, all right, we said that the first official servant from God through me to you in this place. And it's real sad that many after today will not be devoted to ministry yes. as they should be. Amen. Even though we preach, many are still not going to be devoted after today. They still gonna have an excuse. I can't make it. I can't do this. I'm too scared. It's okay. You know what I, I've learned? 
If you want to really do something to get a blessing, go on the trains and preach. That's right. Mm -hmm. Go on the, on the street and give out tracts. That's, That's right. Go to the library and give out tracts. Go to the hospitals and talk to somebody That's right. about Jesus. And I guarantee you, your house will be better than it was when you left. Yeah. But if you don't, you have all this free time. Amen. And instead of going out there giving people a word of encouragement with your free time, you sit in there and watch the turn me. I mean, really, you need to be doing something for God. I don't say all day long, but think about it. If you don't have a job, go out there and have a job with God. That's right. Eight hours giving out tracks. That's right. You'll be surprised how many people you can help. That's right. That's right. It's always something to do. Carry tracks in your pocket. Don't just have a wallet, have a track and a Bible and everything else in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And whenever you come up to somebody, tell them about Jesus. That's it. Tell them about, listen, you got you can even be so good and go to McDonald's and sit in there and say, do you know, can I tell you a story? That's right. Do you know 10 years ago I was doing this and now I'm not doing this no more because I met this man named Jesus and when I met Jesus, he set me free and don't you know he can set your family free? Tell him your story. All your brothers and sisters are saying, tell them that. Tell them that. Tell them you got a church. Tell them you're a pastor now. That's right. You know how many people want to hear a nice testimony while they're eating McDonald's or Dunkin' Donuts or That's something right. in there? Amen. They're just waiting for a word. Uh... And you got a good word to give, but instead of giving it, you hold it to yourself. I'm ashamed to tell them. Don't be ashamed. If you be ashamed of God before man, God will be ashamed yeah. of you before his father. That means if you don't tell him about what he's done for you, he ain't going to talk on your behalf That's in heaven. Because right. you're not lifting up Jesus. That's right. It's all about lifting up Jesus. Yes, this is the day, in, and I'm getting into this, but there's many people say, we're in the last day, but what are you doing? That's right. If we're in the last day, you should just be running like a bat out of hell getting people saved. You ain't got time to play. This is the last days. Then do something about it. Do something about it. If it's the, if I knew, oh my God, look at this. If you know this is the last day on earth, what you gonna do? Something bad. Get people saying something important. So if this is the last days, then do something important. Like it is. Like tomorrow is not promised to you. So get as many people saved as you can today. He that win of souls is wise. That's How many have you won? That's right. You're Not in the right. past. How many are you winning now? You're speaking right. How many have you won now? How many people have you talked to about the goodness of Jesus That's since you've right. been delivered? How many people know you ever had a past? That's right. right. Speaking right. See them ladies on the corner selling their body and you don't tell them you could change. You walk right by them. Why? Because you don't want to be contaminated? You were once one. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen. Why can't you tell them that's not how to go? That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Talk to them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Somebody talk to you. Somebody talk to me. When I was in the expanded buildings in the streets, eating out of garbage cans, living in, in, in all kind of promiscuous life activities, Somebody talk to me. And now I talk to somebody. That's it. Say God, hallelujah. And that's what they say that thing is give away what you get. You can't keep it. You got to give it away. So why don't you give it away? That's right. See somebody in the hospital sick? Go tell them about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I commend our Pastor Marge. He does that. I'm doing it. I was in the hospital going to ICU, CCU, all the floors. And, you know, God has his timing. Yes, he does. But that's everybody's job. Mm -hmm. That's everybody's job. Not just when you feel like it. When you don't feel like it, that's when you should go. That's right. I ain't got no car for you. God will provide. Yes, he will. God will provide. You just got to trust God. Budget your money. Mm -hmm. 
That's say, all right, I might have five dollars, so today I'm gonna use this five dollars for coffee and to go to the hospital to pray for somebody. Instead of getting chips and popcorn and candies and blowing yourself up, <laughs> use coffee to help somebody Bless know the Lord. word of God. Bless the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> it's real. Yes, it is. And in 2016, we need to do more evangelizing. More street ministry. It's not good. But I thank God that it's not good, but I thank God that it's being done. Rather, I do it alone. It's being done. That's right. It's being done. And it's a shame that you can have 10 churches on one block and only one church is going to do outreach. And the other 10 keep walking right by and don't help. Just looking. Yeah. Like you don't belong to do it. Mm. You're not supposed to do it now. Why are you doing our ways? We don't do it. <laughs> and it's amazing how, you know, God blesses us. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to bless people Jeez. with our blessing. Amen? Amen? This is important to know. Amen. See, also, but because they were, we were given, they were given power and the power is for you all to stay delivered from hell and the bondage of the devil. Mm -hmm. That's why we got power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is something. I do not have to preach fire and brimstones. I don't have to preach about money. Because these things are given to us daily. Amen. We're going to hear about it eventually. But I don't have to keep beating you up with fire and brimstone. I don't have to keep beating you up with money coming and blessings and money. Money, no. This is the end times. And right now we need to pay attention to the signs of the times. Because the signs of the times is more prevalent now than ever before. You cannot think about doing nothing for the kingdom of God if you don't keep yourself knowledgeable about what's going on in the times, in the signs of the times. He said be watchful. Pay attention. You know, pay attention to the signs that are coming. Pay attention to what's happening. Amen. You know, don't just pay attention to Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> don't just pay attention to BETs and stuff like that, them shows. And pay attention to what God is doing in this world, what's happening. Remember what we said yesterday? It, it, it's, it's strange that the birds don't even know and they're confused about what to do. They don't know if they should go south or if they should stay in New York. Many times they used to go south for the winter. Now they don't know what to do. They're confused. And it's sad. And nobody's paying attention to that. Nobody's paying attention to that. It's 60 degrees. <laughs> What they said on the news, they said this one snowstorm amounted to like so many over it that's supposed to happen in the summer. It will happen in one day. <laughs> Ain't that something? The amount of snow in one day is supposed to be the amount of snow we get during that summer. But it all happened just like that. In a twinkling of an eye, sudden destruction going to come. Pay attention. Get yourself together. Grab folks. Don't just grab yourself and your children. Grab other folk too. That's right, that's Tell other people about what's going to happen. It's coming. Amen. The flood is coming. Hey, when the flood came, Noah didn't just speak to himself. He tried to tell everybody to come. Yes, Jesus. We don't want to tell everybody. We just want to tell our friends or our close loved ones that the time is winding up. No, we need to go to the oil ye lands and tell the people about what we know and what we see. That's right. We have to. Because if we don't, nobody else will. You must work the work of the Lord at all times. He frees you so you may tell someone else about what he has done for you. See, many people in church do not know why they was delivered. Nor do they care. Body was given power. Because many people, saved and unsaved, do not teach.
teach about it. Amen? Many people say that an unsaved do not teach on the importance of power and why we have it. So deliverance is given to us so we may devote time to telling people about the person that set us free. That's right. You got that? Deliverance is given to us so we may set time and be devoted to telling people about the person that set us free. God is saying we need to tell people about our freedom and our deliverance. Instead of talking about everything else, we need to be real with the truth that God saved us from sleeping in the streets, eating out the garbage can, prostituting our bodies, selling our food stamps for crack <laughs> and other drugs. See? Nobody want to talk about that. That's sin. Nobody want to talk about that kind of sin anymore. You don't see the preacher talking about people that used to sell their food stamps for drugs. Yeah, we did. Oh, no. But we don't do that no more. But when we see somebody that's doing it, we laugh at them or talk about them. But don't forget where you come from. You used to do it too. Especially the booklet, 7 for 10. Yeah, y'all like don't know. <laughs> but it's sad that the people get saved and got on 18,000 different roads that they can't come down to the person that's still trying to make it ends meet by selling their food stamp. But then you got to identify with them because you don't live there no more. And that's what's sad. You all the way up here and you're not helping them that's still down here. And that's sad. And God is not pleased. And he's going to strip them people down to size. He is. Because people don't want to tell the truth no more. They preach about everything but sin. Homeless people come. They don't tell them how to get in the shelter. They just tell them how to give an offering. If you give me this, God's going to give you that. But you ain't give them an address to a shelter or a soup kitchen or somewhere to get food. These are the things we're supposed to do. We're supposed to help people recover what they lost. So it's our job to show them what do you need? What can we help you with? What do you want from this hospital? And then afterwards, what can you give in, 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 in service? to God to help us help others. But if you're not helping nobody, nobody's going to want to work with you. That's right. Why am I going to want to service with you and you're not helping nobody? We just sitting here doing nothing. No. We need to help each other from where we came. I remember when I started in ministry growing up, I was in, all I heard was testimonies about what they used to do and how they no longer, and how they got over you don't even hear the song no more. How I got over. No. <laughs> My soul sits back and wonder how I got over. Yes. Those songs are obsolete. Why? Nobody want to talk about how they got over. But you need to go back to the old landmark. That's how you get people saved. By telling them, look, I've been there. I used to do that. I used to have no bank account. I used to beg for change on the corner. I used to pick up cans and bottles. But when I got a head on my shoulder from Jesus Christ, I've learned that I could go to work. I've learned that I could use my money for the righteousness of God. I don't have to buy drugs no more. I don't have to buy crack no more. I don't have to lie and steal no more. I don't have to cheat no more. I can live holy now because I learned how. From the Bible Amen. and from God. And if you sit up under me long enough, I will help you learn how. Right. But they're not preaching that. No. They're not teaching that. No. <laughs> and this is what the church needs. This is what the people need. The people need somebody to come down and sit next to them and tell them, I've been there. Don't beat yourself up. I fell plenty times. I made mistakes. I went back once or twice. But I never stayed back. 
So you might have failed and you might feel useless. You might feel worthless. But you.